I've built a few Gauge 1 live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. Hello and welcome to the first in a series of the Gauge 1 GWR Prairie Tank build. We've uh, done our little bit of CAD work, printed them out and also now we've actually got them back from our laser cutting company. Here's what the frames look like. And this is the basic starting point um, for the locomotive. So having these laser cut, I mean, you could do these by hand and take the metal and cut it out. And I have done this in the past where you cut a strip of metal and you file it out and cut all the shapes very tedious, it can be very laborious. Um, you can do the same thing for a virtually a fraction, very low cost to do this. But the other advantage is these will be very, very accurate. And that is the most important thing that we're looking for, the frames. Everything is built on the frames. So these frames have got to be accurate. These are the slots where the the bushes where the wheels will go and these have to be spot on. If there's any misalignment uh, you'll get binding and you'll get all sorts of problems later on further on down the line. So we've got our nice set of laser cut frames uh, ready to start. So the first thing what I would normally do now, the first thing we need to do is to make the buffer beams. That's the front bit, that's the bit where the buffers fit on. And that's going to be a piece of brass angle. And basically the buffer beams will fit. What we need to do is put some slots in here. We'll actually mill two slots in here and the buffer beams will fit on to there. And that'll give us the start of the spacing. Um, the buffer beams will be fitted on, and uh, you'll see later on when we've actually done this, there'll be a little bracket on, a little bracket on there that screws on, and these will be fixed onto there, so we can screw the whole thing together. But during the course of the build, this frame is going to be assembled and taken apart many, many times. So um, you can, I've seen some examples where these are all welded up, but that's where as a, as a solid, you know, as, as a solid piece. And, but I think if you weld it up, you sort of close the door behind you that you can't get the whole thing stripped back um, as, as you need. It's going to have to take it apart eventually anyway, down to this stage for when I come to do the painting. Cut this approximately to length, stick it in the milling machine, get it to the exact length, and we're going to cut two slots in there like so. I'll just mark out where they're going to go. There's going to be two slots that we're going to put on. I'm going to mill these, I say, I'm going to mill these slots out. The cutter I'm going to use is just something we call an end mill and that fits in here and goes up into the machine and basically you're going to put these two pieces in just to mill the ends. These will fit onto here. These fit onto the frames like so. I hold them straight. These fit onto frames like this. So that's the start of the frames. Um, what to be, to be done next is on these front of the frames here, uh, I need to drill two holes. Two holes got to be drilled through here. And a little bracket, little brass bracket, is going to be fixed onto the inside of here, fixed onto the inside of here and obviously those two holes in the bracket in the in the frame will screw into here and this will fix into there. Um, that's our next little job to do. 
Okay, I've just marked out the uh, position where these holes are going to go. That's better. So this is what we've um, finished up with now. What I shall do next is to um, I'll clamp these two together because we'll drill the two two together so I should put the two frames there clamp these tight and drill through for both of them right so we've got the frames all clamped up now and our, our holes ready to drill so we can get ready to drill these now set that up in the drill and we should probably, yeah, I'll probably get away with it doing it that way. So there's enough support underneath while we drill through on these. Some power on. Now this is just a tapping size I'm going through with at the moment. Two holes drilled. What we'll be able to do now is separate this from the clamps and the next thing that we will do is spot these two holes through here on our brackets. These will eventually then be fitted onto the buffer beam. It's just basically a bracket to uh, hold the buffer beam on. It's a very important part to um, to get this right. So that'll be the next stage. Got the first part of the bracket drilled. Uh, so I've just drilled that uh, with a tapping size. So we're now going to put a an APA thread on here. BA, a lot of these models British Association still use the the old imperial threads. Uh, a lot of new drawings that you see do tend to show them in metric. They use metric threads, but there's still a lot of the drawings uh, they use BA threads, 10 BA, 8 BA, 12 BA. These are typical thread sizes that are used. So that's the first hole done. I need to do now just put a, a clearance hole in the frame. As it, up to now I just drill this with um, a tapping size so I shall open that out now to get the 8BA screw through there. We've got the bracket drilled now and we've got our clearance hole in position. So now we can put our APA screw in and screw this into position. Alright, so we've put our APA screw in. And the screw is quite long at the moment, uh, so eventually we shall trim this down to length. It's ridiculously long. So there's the bracket mounting point in position now and this is what I'll be doing for the other for the other one and also for the other bracket on the other side. 